Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to Rob Motive. As I'm out here in the garage looking at the gorgeous third generation Tacoma, I mean, look at this thing. And whether you like the color or not, look at the lines, the body. It's awesome. And I get to thinking as I await, consider buying the new 2024 Tacoma, that there's a few things about the new Tacoma that I'm really not looking forward to, that I really don't like too much, at least from the pictures and things that I've seen, right? There are actually seven things that I'm not real keen on. Number one is the roof hat. What's a roof hat? Well, I've got a picture here to kind of show you guys. They kind of, it looks to me like extended the roof line or the height of the roof by adding a cap on the top of it. If you look at the side view, over here is a, an early rendering, you can see there's a line right there. It looks like they really just extended it up and uh, did that to kind of give us more headroom inside, which is something that everybody has complained about, I think. I don't like the way that it looks. I mean, if you look at the existing Tacoma, it flows nicely to the back and then rolls down to the back window, right? Not this new Tacoma. It has like a, a roof hat on it. Not real keen on that design. Secondly, while we're looking at this picture, and this isn't uh, gonna be on every truck, of course, but this air dam across the front. Look how chunky and wide and tall it makes the truck look up here. I don't think it's a good look, I don't like it, and I think most people will probably remove this. Could be sacrificing some fuel economy in doing that, but it is just ugly on the front of the truck. I don't like that. Now, looking over here at the Pro, where you can see, again, a rendering, they don't have that on here, and it looks much better. I don't dig that. I think it kind of detracts from the looks of the truck myself. Moving on, the four-cylinder turbo, something that has been very controversial amongst the Tacoma faithful, I guess. For me, it kind of depends. You know, I've got the four-cylinder Wrangler, and it has plenty of power. Now, it's not going to be uh, lighter than that Wrangler, of course, so it'll be interesting to see how Toyota handles it. And in the Wrangler, it does not have the turbo. So that ought to give us a little bit more oomph, a little bit more torque. It's going to be interesting to see. I would have preferred that Toyota kept the V6. And if they had to go turbo, then put a turbo in the V6. Or maybe even a hybrid turbo. I could have lived with that much better, I guess, than putting a four-cylinder turbo in it. And I'm not alone. A lot of people feel that way. Next up, number four the floating screen. Here's another picture that I have. I keep these up to kind of remind me of what's coming, right? We have the big giant iPad-ish floating screen in the interior. It's still to me, although it's growing on me a little bit, but every time I look at this picture, it just looks out of place. It looks like something they just grabbed off the shelf, literally an iPad, and stuck it in there. I mean, it protrudes up above the dash line here, and it honestly, it kind of blocks your view a little bit over the top. Now, I realize not every trim level of the Tacoma is going to have this. This is going to be for the higher trims. But still, if you end up getting one with this in it, I don't know. It really does look out of place. As I mentioned, I am uh, getting a little bit more used to it. I do have a floating screen in the Prius back there, which I love that car. And it comes in handy. I mean, it's a bigger screen. It's easier to see. It looks cool once it's all lit up. But it's still a floating iPad-ish screen. I don't know. Not a big favorite of that. Number five, the piano finished trim. Now, this is another one that, of course, is not going to be on every trim level. It depends on, I guess, which one you decide what model you want to get. But on the Pro, and going back to this rendering here, it has like a piano finished trim. That's opposed to the kind of matte black vinyl or plastic look that we have right now. Much better, particularly for wear. Have you ever seen a piano finished trim of what it looks like after 
even a few months of ownership gets a lot of scratches and stuff in it gets all smudged up it just doesn't look good why toyota has decided to put that at least on the pro on the outside of the truck i don't know it does not look good to me and i'm sure if you use the truck for heavy off-roading maybe running through brush and stuff like that it's not going to wear very well even just washing it with a mitt i mean imagine if your mitt's got a little bit of grit in it you should never use the same one that you use for the lower areas or the the tires by the way but if you do you're going to put a bunch of little micro scratches in that how's that going to look on your brand new i don't know sixty thousand dollar trd pro not great number six auto stop i can't stand auto stop but there's a caveat to that recently i had the 2024 tundra and Toyota has kind of figured out a way to make auto stop livable. You really have to push down on the brake for it to kick in. And they even give you a message on the screen that states to engage auto stop, press harder on the brake pedal, something like that. So they've kind of come up with a way for people like me who don't like it to not have to use it. When you pull up to a stop sign, unless you, you know, give a little extra depressing the brake, it doesn't kick in. I think that's a great way for Toyota to satisfy probably government requirements and the consumer as well. Put it in, but make it take a really strong effort for it to activate. Hopefully they'll do the same thing with the new Tacoma. I can't imagine that they wouldn't. They seem to have figured that out. You can bet the new Tacoma is going to have auto stop. Everything these days seems to. It's unfortunate they're jamming that down our throat. But I do not look forward to it unless they set it up the same way that they have in the new Tundra, the 2024 Tundra. Lastly, the biggest thing, the price. You know, people were complaining about the price of the existing Tacoma. People are going to go nuts over the price of the new Tacoma. I mean, you could spend upwards of 50 grand, depending on what trim level you go in, and even more than that if you go full Mati all the way to the top. A $60,000 normally priced Tacoma? That's absurd to me. That's a price that I am not willing to pay. Not because I can't, but because I won't. I'm not going to pay that kind of money for a Tacoma. Now, what that does for me is it lowers the trim level that is an option for me to buy. I'm not going to exceed, man, the most, and it'd be a, a real struggle for me to justify to myself, but forty to $45,000, let us say $45,000. Not going to spend fifty. dollars certainly not going to spend sixty. dollars No way would I ever spend seventy. dollars And you know they're going to be out there, particularly when they're first released for sale. Dealerships are going to add five, ten thousand, maybe more dollars to the price of that truck. That's absurd to me. I think it's insane, and I think they're going to price a lot of people out of the market. Maybe that's their goal. They're trying to make Toyota a premium Lexus-type vehicle that only folks who are willing to spend a heck of a lot more money are going to buy. We shall see. Who knows? Anyway, those are just seven things that I'm not looking forward to that I really don't like about the 2024 Tacoma. Leave a comment. Let me know. Anything out there other than these things that you don't like? I'd just be curious to know. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there. Bye.